let's go ahead and get started today. Thanks for coming, everybody. Let's get through with the uh, uh, the technical legal stuff. So uh, basically, this says don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Uh, that this is all information that's for education purposes only. No promises of trading success are to be understood or uh, or expressed as expressed or implied. Okay. So this is all about <clears throat> trade like it's your business. And this is the second part. First part was yesterday, and there is a video of it that you can find on our website videos page. Um, so this is part two. Now, what I want to, you to understand is not just pretend like this is, you know, a business. But this is your only business, okay? So the whole mindset of this is it must succeed. Uh, the One of the larger problems that most of us have is the fact that we're just trying this. We're trying to get you to do is to think past the, 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 the fact that you have backup money available. You know, sure, you should have a backup, but that's not how you need to approach any new small business. If you're only sticking your toe in the water just to kind of see if it might work, chances are it's not going to work. You've got to fully commit and it's got to become who you are, right? Who you are when you relate to the, the rest of the world. So you remember this guy? from yesterday's event. So this is you, right? Right after you were going to do something, this is you. So you remember what it was? Gene does. You remember what it was? Okay, I'm sure most of you here watched the video or uh, were here yesterday in attendance. So you were going to do this, right? We were going to create a business name. You're going to optionally create a business logo. Now, seems kind of silly, right? But the whole thing suddenly makes it something substantial, you know, something of value. Um, it's less a thing you're trying to do and something that you have done now. You've started. You're no longer waiting to learn how to trade before you start getting in the mindset of this being how you're going to support yourself moving forward, okay? Getting a business bank account, that's the next big step. And you're going to need this because I'm going to talk to you about this later uh, today. We're going to talk about this and why this is important. This a, plays a big function in getting your whole mindset around this being your only business, okay? And then you need to check with your, your bookkeeper or accountants and, and lawyers and stuff because I can't give you any advice on uh, the licensing or corporate stuff. But you're going to have to do it if you're running a real business. So when someone asks you what you do, your answer is, okay, here it is. I have a day trading business. How many of you were here yesterday? A lot of you, I see. And then I'm sure there are people watching this video that uh, watched the video and then moved on. So what you want to identify as this business, right? You want to have a business name and a logo and an identity as a, a day trader. I know Gene did it, and I think that's awesome. That's perfect. He's getting himself in the right mindset. But why didn't the rest of you do it? Maybe some of you did. But by and large... I'm going to say most of you did not. So, 
You know, I've given you some free advice that has helped a lot of other traders become more serious about their trading. So what is it that you're waiting for? Are you, do you think I'm just full of it? Or do you think I don't know what I'm talking about? Or that I what I'm saying really doesn't pertain to you yet because you're just not ready? Um, uh, or more likely, you're just waiting for me to teach you the holy grail trade setup that's going to make you rich. And you don't need any of this. Or you're just gathering information because, hey, you can't have too much information, right? Watching and listening for things that might that you might use someday or something that agrees with your preconceived assumptions and expectations about trading. Right? So, you know, a lot of people, this is, this is free advice from an experienced trader yet it probably wasn't what you wanted to hear. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't part of your preconceived assumptions. So you're going to skip that part. But here's the thing. I can only light a path for you. I can't walk the path for you. I can give you advice. And it's up to you whether you want to keep wandering around in the dark, running as fast as you can, or if you want to slow down and take del deliberate and intentional steps towards your goals totally up to you. And I want to help you, but I can't do it for you. I gave you some good advice that most of you ignored or put off until some later date. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that was ultimately the fate of your entire trading career. Now I've, I've walked the scary path and come out the other side. I've helped hundreds or even thousands of other traders do it too. If you want to talk to them, just ask us and we'll send a list of them to you to communicate with, or better yet, come, uh, come to the trade room and you can ask them in the trade room. There's some traders here today that uh, are hanging out with us here today that have been trading with us for a really long time. Ask them. Not while I'm doing this presentation, but when we get to the end and you want to ask questions of our traders, go ahead. All right? So don't take this lightly. This isn't BS. This has changed a lot of, of traders' careers. All right. So let's say <clears throat> I have a new position at my trading company. And I'm sick of trading. I want to go sit on the beach all day. But I need somebody to trade my account for me. So if I hired you to be the lead trader of my trading business, and then I trained you on our system, I trained you on our setups, I gave you a detailed trade plan, which, you know, is that's basically your job description. So based on your current trading performance, would you be able to follow to the letter every single day that trade plan? Every day. Would you be able at the end of the day to be able to stand in front of me and show me exactly on the trade plan exactly where you use the rules to execute a trade? Or tell me why you skipped a trade without saying something like, well, I lost the first two trades and I got scared and I didn't want to jump in anymore. You know, even though the rules say under these conditions, you take this trade. So would I be forced to fire you? I really want you to think about this based on your history with trading. Do you trade the way you approach your other job or profession? Are you accountable for your trading decisions? Do you have the option to tell your boss, well, I was just messing around, so it didn't really count. 
Can you do that with your current job or previous job or profession? Or I just wanted to see what would happen. Or I got bored. I just really needed to you know, have some activity in my day because I was falling asleep. I know I wasn't supposed to do that, but once I realized I made a mistake, I decided, ah, oh, what the heck? Let's see what'll happen because I'm in the trade now. So let's just ride it out, see what happens. 50-50 could go either way. And have you thought of this stuff? Any of you, this stuff go through your head? So what I want you to do is be a business, not just pretend to be a business. And, and so, and what I mean by that is all companies, all businesses are divided up into different responsibilities. And, and I know that you're by yourself. You're the one, you wear all the hats, but that doesn't mean that the business doesn't need to be divided into different responsibilities. Yes, it's all you, but it's not all you to do all at the same time while you're trading. Okay, there are different responsibilities in a business. Sure, there's the boss. The boss makes sure everybody else is doing their job. The lead trader is the guy that does what? What does the lead trader do? executes the trade plan. That's all the lead trader does. When you sit down to trade, your only job is to execute your trade plan. Bookkeeper, what do bookkeepers do? They keep track of the money. Well, the bookkeeper and the lead trader have two different jobs. They don't work together. Lead trader operate or executes the trade plan. Bookkeeper just keeps track of the numbers. And that's generally done away from the trading desk. Training. Who's responsible for training? Not the lead trader. That's not his job. Somebody's got to train the lead trader. Keeping records. Planning. All got to have a department and it all happens at a different time. You don't do it all at once. You don't sit down in the morning and go, well, I need to execute some trades and I need to win, 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 win. That's not running a business. That's running a fraction of a business. And that's not even if you're not just executing your trade plan as the lead trader, that's not even one thing that you're doing as a business. All right. So to start dividing up your business into different responsibilities. Now we're going to have things like dedicated set days and times that you're going to be at work, right? Same as any other job. Do not sit in your pajamas to do your job. Subconsciously, you're telling yourself that your real day starts after trading. And you get dressed when you're finished doing that thing that, you know, you're just kind of playing around at. And when you're ready to attack your day, then you go get dressed. Nope. You've got to get up. Get dressed just like you would for any other job. It's, it's the way you're, you feel when you're dressed and ready to go versus sitting in your pajamas, having some coffee, and then starting your day, okay? Don't allow distractions. Put a note on your door. Unless the house or a person is on fire, do not knock on this door. Because I'm at work, right? Your boss at your current job doesn't allow it, right? Or at whatever your previous job was. So you shouldn't either. Make sure at the end of each day, you, the boss, 
has got to go through the task list of every single person in your company, which yes, it's you, but you wear a lot of different hats. So you've got to go through each and every item and make sure each task was done the way it's supposed to be done each day. And it, if it hasn't been, it needs to be done and it needs to be thoroughly checked over. Make each department accountable. You know, in, in every real business, each person has a job and is accountable to each other. A business cannot run without accountability. Right? You could put a by being by not being accountable and not doing your job, you could put a whole company and all of its employees and all of its employees' families at risk because you can't do your job and you're not accountable. So you're everybody's accountable to everybody else in a business. So you've got to make sure that your lead trader is accountable to your bookkeeper. The bookkeeper is accountable to the trainer and so forth, so on and so forth. Job descriptions and company policy. Okay. So I want you to write down these job descriptions when you're doing it as, as if you're writing them for another person. In fact, I want you to write it as if you're writing it for a 10 year old kid. Make them very clear. Make them uh, uh, very simple, but detailed. Write and rewrite them often. And you have to make sure the job gets done each day. Remember, it's important. Write it as if you're writing it out for somebody else that you can turn over you can hand one of your hats that you wear. You can hand it over to another person on any given day when you're ready to retire from that job. Okay? Now, as for mission statement, what is your company, what's, what's its mission? Why is it, does it exist? What is, what is the reasons for its existence and what is it going to do to make things better. You can Google mission statement. There's a lot of good stuff out there on that. So a company policy, that's something that you have in place. You already know what's going to happen if some circumstances come up. For the most part, you have a plan if I don't know, there's another flash crash or planes hitting buildings or um, uh, your account gets frozen or your platform locks up uh, or, um, you know, any kind of a contingency. You take a, a, you know, a major drawdown over 30 days um, or you've been wildly successful over 30 days. You've got to have a plan on what happens next. At what point do you take action to do something? You can't just do this by seat of the pants. Oh, look, I've got, I've got an extra $10,000 in my trading account. I should do something with that. No, you should already know and have these things in place that say, when this happens, this happens, All right? So you as the boss has to go through and, and scrutinize what you as all of the other members of your company have done. So it's no longer just you. You could be the boss and it's easy to be the boss and just say, Hey, that guy's screwing up. Hey, snap to or you're fired, but that's you. So that's why I'm wondering the way you're currently approaching your trading. Are you accountable? And would I be forced to fire you if you worked for me? So here's a big takeaway. Okay, making your business accountable. Here's what I here's what I want you to do. 
So I want you to list your monthly bills, okay? And I want you to rank them from the smallest to the largest, okay? On the list, you'll you'll rank them. But the smallest one up at the top and just keep working down for your monthly, regular monthly bills, okay? Yeah, this is easy. Now, starting at the top one, I want you to remove that smallest bill. When I did this, it was my water bill. And back then it was probably 25 bucks a month. So I removed my water bill from my personal monthly bills and I added it to the one monthly bill that now my business was responsible for. So my mission became not try to learn how to trade successfully. My mission became I must in the month $25 ahead of where I started because that bill now belongs to my trading company. How am I going to make this happen? What do I need to do to make sure I make at least $25 this month. You realize how different the thinking is here? How what we're doing is trying to rewire your brain and think differently about how you're approaching business uh, or how you're approaching trading. Now you're thinking about it like a business. This was the turning point for me. Remember yesterday I said, you know, I asked myself a question why I was such a failure at trading. I kept trying to learn how to trade. That was my mission, learn how to trade. But once I turned it around and I turned it into a business that must not fail, and I, I must do what I have to do to make sure it doesn't fail, well, that was a whole different approach. I started taking different kinds of trades. I stopped being such a gunslinger. Or, uh, or or having FOMO. I know that's a big problem. Lots of FOMO. I stopped doing that and I started only taking the trades that I that had a really strong uh, probability of winning. And for the longest time, I only took those trades because my mission was to make twenty five dollars. So I got very selective. And boredom was okay because I wasn't thinking about my boredom and I wasn't thinking about the money. I was thinking about the responsibility that my business has to pay that bill. That's not thinking about money. Okay. That's, that's being responsible and accountable. So you're, you're going to add these to the business expenses. And you're going to, once you've hit it for a couple of months, then you're going to go to number two on the list. And you're going to add the next bill. And you're going to go a couple of months and your, your trading business becomes responsible for the next bill. Okay. And eventually, you're going to get to a point where your trading business is now bearing the responsibility of your personal income. This is how you transition from somebody who's just trying to learn how to trade to somebody who's day trading every day regularly for an income. You won't do it one day. Okay. That's the, that's another problem that we all have is somewhere we haven't really thought about or figured out how it is we're going to become full-time day traders. All we know is we want to be, and the logical first step is learn how to trade. And that's where we all seem to get stuck. Learn how to trade, and then we'll figure it out after that. And that seems logical, but it is, in fact, 
not the way to do it. Okay. So the thing is, is you want to make sure you have a simple trading system, right? And one that is proven successful. These are audited results. Um, and so uh, we've been doing this, this been keeping up these records. This is four years worth of uh, data from our trade room. So you can see uh, we've got a pretty good trading system that you can, everything that I've been telling you about, if you don't have a good trading system that you have confidence in, well, you shouldn't even be trading that system if you don't have confidence in it. And maybe you try something different. And we have something that's very different. We've been doing it for a long time, since 2009. We've been doing the exact same thing every day since 2009. Um, and you can go back to our trade of the day videos uh, uh, on our website and on YouTube and see that the trades haven't changed. It's the same. And it just keeps working and working. Uh, a lot of the traders that are in our trade room have been there over 10 years. They come every day and have been for over 10 years. So uh, this is just something I thought that I'd let you know that if you don't have something that you could apply the to your business or to your trading as a business, if you don't have a good trading system, well, then it's kind of hard to get any kind of traction. So we have a very simple trading system. So you see how we have these indicators. There's a lot going on behind these indicators. And I spent a lot of time and money and effort and energy and tears and sweat to make these indicators so simple that it's just a yes or no, okay? There's only a yes or no answer. And here's a trade setup right here where we entered on the open of this bar. Here's a trade setup where we shorted the open of this bar. We shorted the open of this bar. These are what our trade setups look like and they will every single time. There's no other rules to look for. We have a channel. Price breaks out of the channel we get a series of indicators telling us, see what first thing we're doing is we're reading strength so that we can anticipate weakness. And that's what's happening here. Notice the, the length of this bar relative to all these bars. It's a lot bigger. Go look at any chart. I'm not, this is not cherry picked here. Go look at a chart, any chart. When you see these big bars, building like this, exhaustion is imminent. And when exhaustion sets in, what happens? Price drops. Well, we pick up almost exactly where that's going to happen. Now, sometimes it's got a, a little bit more left in it, and sometimes we get stopped out and it keeps going. I mean, that's just obviously because this is not 100%. So obviously we do get stopped out. We do take losses, but that's part of trading. You've just got to do it. That's just part of it. But it's a very simple system. We trade three hours a day in the trade room. We average five and a half trades per session or almost two trades per hour. If you're in trading for the thrill of it and the fun and the excitement, uh, this isn't it. Uh, don't, don't do trading for that. It's a career that you have to work at just like any other career, okay? So here's some characteristics of our trades. Um, at that point, we're going to sell short, okay? So we have a channel, price pushing up hard. We have an overbought condition with what we call a speed tick. That's where the orders are being processed faster than us little retail traders can do it. This pullback alert is telling us that the volume inside this bar was initially a lot of up volume, obviously. But as soon as price got in this area where the resistance is and probably the, NP, the sellers are just kind of hanging around here waiting, this is where the exhaustion sets in. The buyers keep trying to buy, but they're becoming exhausted. The sellers are not exhausted. They've just been sitting here doing nothing. And so there's a churning activity where weakness is setting in for the buyers. So that's very important to us here. This bar opens with divergence. So momentum has already changed directions. That's what this star and that 
that happens on the open of the bar. Because of this, and our trades are very quick, there's very little need for emotion control. I created this system because I sucked at managing my emotions. It was terrible. I could, just couldn't do it. I could do it for a day or two. I'd read a whole book about, you know, the emotions in trading and what and how to go about, you know, not being an emotional trader. And I'd be all wired up and ready to go and say, okay, I can do this. And yeah, it lasted for maybe a day or two. And then next thing you know, the emotions are back or they never left. You cannot be an emotionless trader. It's impossible. So instead of having to have emotions or manage emotions, I looked for a way to reduce the need to manage emotions. Which makes it also very low stress. I'll be in and out of a trade in just a couple of minutes. In fact, I'll be in a trade and I'm talking in the trade room and we could be talking about something else. I say, hold on. Okay, I'm going to short this if this and this happens. And then I short it. I put on the order. I tell everybody, okay, I've just shorted this. And then we'll keep talking about whatever we were talking about if it lasts for very long. Usually the trade is going to be less than a minute. But sometimes it's two or three minutes. If it's three minutes, we're all going, oh, God, this trade's taking forever. <laughs> so there's no gray areas. There's no, well, if this and this are like this and this is over here and this is like this and this and then you get this and this, there's none of that. This is yes or no. Yes, it's a setup. No, it's not. Nothing vague. The, the trade management is very simple. When the conditions that got you into the trade have changed such that you never would have gotten into that trade under these current conditions. It's time to shorten your stop. And that's it. That's all we ever do. We never make our stops bigger. We never uh, mark it out. We never pull our, uh, our target in uh, or push it out. We don't. Only thing we ever do is shorten our stop to get us out of the trade as painlessly as possible if necessary. This works great whether you're a single contract trader or multiple contract trader. It works. It, it doesn't matter. And there's not different rules for different instruments. We Everything we trade, we've got six instruments that we trade, uh, futures instruments, and every one of them, the chart settings are exactly the same. And then we focus on the trade plan. And I talk about this all the time. And if somebody said in the trade room says something that I, that I pick up on, uh, shouldn't, uh, that doesn't sound right. What's going on? Um, I'll, I'll call them out on something they may have said. And everybody else in the trade room is like, uh Oh, here comes the bricks. <laughs> Tony's going to yell at somebody. I don't really yell, but uh, I, I'll pick up things that I'll hear people say something. And to me, it's obvious that they're thinking about money and they still haven't done the work required to stop thinking about money. We have that in our fast forward program is the stuff that you need to be thinking about and working on to make money. Not what you're not what it's all about. Trading is not about money. Trading is about the, is the net result of doing a good job at executing your trade plan. That's where the money comes from. Okay? So if you want to know more about this, go to our, our videos page. And, yeah, we've got over 500 videos, actually, like 700. I counted them last night, but I'm like, ah, I'm not going to change the slide. It's like 700 videos. So there's lots of information about what we do. There's lots of information about how we do it, the rules for the trade setups. Uh, I could do another training, but I've done so many, and they're right there for you uh, to look at. Feel free to go to our, our videos page or to our uh, YouTube site. And you can watch a video that's five years old. 
and it'll be as valid today as it was five years ago. You'll learn as much as you need to learn watching a five, eight-year-old video as you were watching one that I just did last week because it hasn't changed. The rules haven't changed. The indicators haven't changed. It just keeps getting better and better. Right? Now, for me, personally, I think the fastest way to learn is to go to our Trade of the Day video playlist. And that's also on that page that Keith just posted. Go to that playlist and start watching the Trade of the Day videos because typically you're going to hear me. Now, the, the commentary is during the trade room. But if I see a trade that was just really obviously super simple and, and textbook type of trade, um, I'll highlight it. I'll take a snippet of it and we'll load it up to YouTube and call it Trade of the Day video. But eventually you're going to start to notice that that they're all the same. And you can learn how to trade our system just by listening to me comment on what it was that I did, why I took that trade, and and why I managed it the way I did. We've got a lot of uh, really good traders in our trade room every day. We'd love for you to come hang out with us in the trade room. If you can't, we have a great program called our uh, inside of our Pro Trader program called the Fast Forward. Fast forward will teach you how to practice your trading away from live trading. Okay. So if you can't come to the trade room because you're working, we'll teach you how to trade with us, but you do it in the evenings with our, our videos. Uh, I record every trading session. Then you can download replay data and use the playback utility and trade right along with us. Okay, and that's all part of our fast forward. So you can you can look into that. Uh, we got a 20% discount on any of our programs. The fast forward, the extra income, or the starter program. Um, and use this coupon code right here. And okay, now questions. Gene says when starting out. As only a one-person business in trading, how do you write up all those policies and mission statements? Well, answer, Gene, what if you had 10 people working for you and it was your job to take John and de define what it is he's supposed to be doing as the lead trader? I mean, that, isn't that how you would do that? You don't do it for yourself. You do it for, for whoever. So if you have to kind of play games in your mind to get there, you've heard the term fake it till you make it. That's kind of what you're going to do here. You're going to get in your mind because you've it's a process. You've got to not only convince yourself or trading not to be about the money, but you've also got to work on thinking about trading a different way. After a while, it's automatic. You don't have to think about it at all. It is. It's who you are. The first time, and I want you to think about this, the first time somebody says, so what is it you do? And you say, I have a day trading business. I want you to identify how that makes you feel. Think about that. How does it make you feel based on their reaction? I know it doesn't matter what other people think. It matters what you think. So does it make you feel proud? They don't need to know if you're successful or not. You're, you have a day trading business. Is that not is that not right? Is that not true? Quit telling people, well, I'm retired or I'm going to be retiring soon or whatever. No, I have a day trading business. That 
is that is an amazing confidence booster. And if you don't have confidence, you got to stop trading until you earn your confidence. Okay. Uh, 